series of RC Expert that we're doing. And uh, um, I know we've known each other for quite a long time, haven't we? Um, we have. We're yeah. getting old. <laughs> yeah, we're getting old, yeah. So first of all, first of all, I'd like to, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. So I'm Tanya Stimpson and I'm the director of a small independent charity called Vision Support Harrogate District. Yes. And has it, hasn't it just, uh, just last week, it's 100 years? Yes, on the, it was Thursday actually. We were we were a hundred. It was very strange. Been in the centre by myself, but so many people called and it just went crazy. It was so nice because I thought, you know, what a disappointment really to not be able to celebrate. But do you know we did? So a naughty member dropped a box of chocolates off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know they shouldn't be going out but it was that they were going on an essential trip um, right. as well so they decided yes. to drop a box of chocolates off and it was lovely I was on the phone all day so yes excellent was... excellent so I mean you, presumably you had something sort of in mind that you're going to do before Covid came along well for, yes for I mean service. we had so many plans so yeah. many I mean um, you know, you do know us very well and there's always a party going on or cake or something at the centre. So <laughs> we were going to have a big party, um, obviously, but there were so many other things planned as well. And it's just, it is very disappointing. But I think if nothing else, COVID has showed us how much of a family we are at the centre. So, you know, it's, even if yeah. we do have to wait a little bit longer, it is our yeah. AGM in October. So, Fingers crossed, we might be able to have a little party. Excellent, excellent. So, um, so what does what's the job of director involve for the charity? Well, <laughs> probably not what you'd think. Right. <laughs> I think the first uh, we're we're a very formal but informal charity. So I suppose my first role as director would probably be mum <laughs> to everyone. <everybody. laughs> <laughs> so I'm definitely mum first. Um, and really, it's just with us being 100 years old, I think any director's role is, is to actually ensure that the charity is in the state it needs to be to continue serving the community, really. So I'll do anything from um, making sure we're financially sound um, to just promoting ourselves in the community and being friendly and um, looking after our members is our biggest thing. If our members are happy, we're happy. Yeah. So, so really, it's a varied role. Very, very varied. I mean, <laughs> I've seen you doing every single job when I've been into the society. And I have done every single job there as well. That's yeah. I, I'm definitely one of those that I've worked my way up. <laughs> yeah. So, so when, when did when did you start at uh, at the society? So. Um, last year when I was 20, so that would be 24 years ago, um, I had started losing my eyesight very suddenly. And so the centre became a little bit of a refuge for me, uh, a bit of a safe place to go. And uh, so I started there as a member. So, you know, nobody can say, oh, well, you don't understand because actually I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, I started there as a member and then just building my confidence I went through volunteer roles and teacher roles and IT tutor roles to eventually becoming director so yes I've Excellent. definitely done a bit of everything there yeah so so if uh, if someone came along brand new uh, to the society so how would uh, how would that how would you interact with them how would they sort of become part of the Harrogate family I suppose as it were mm -hmm. Well, it always starts with that conversation because although, you know, I say I do understand how people feel who are visually impaired, you know, we don't really. Yeah, everybody has their own journey. So it starts with that conversation, really. And I think what um, we're probably best at at the Vision Support Centre is actually just listening, you know, just being somebody who listens with no judgment or, you know, there's... No, there's no right or wrong way of feeling about losing your eyesight and I think just being there with no pressure and just listen and then they I think the person at their own pace decides when it's right to to participate or to join in a service uh, we try and tell them 
as much as they can about living with sight loss in the hope that even if they don't act on it at that point, um, it might be something they think about in the future. You know, one conversation I had 20 years ago, you know, sort mm. of made a big difference to my life now. So, and I may have been a little bit, um, well, I may have needed a bit of persuasion at times. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, all those conversations I've had in the past, I can look back on and think, you know, it was great that I was informed. So we try and do the same thing. And then, you know, if people are feeling isolated and lonely, we've got so many classes and things going on at the centre. So, you know, even if we don't talk about eyesight at all, yeah. talk about something else instead, like crosswords or um, pottery or something. So there's always something for somebody, I think, at the centre. Yeah. So it's quite a few different classes and that you put on actually at the centre. Yeah, so every day, every day we have at least two classes on a day. So um, it can be anything from support for an eye condition, like um, Macular Society very kindly come along and do a session once a month. Um, we have the North Yorkshire County Council Sensory Team come in once a month and do a session um, for people new to sight loss. Or it can be something fun like line dancing or <laughs> pottery or knitting, you know, anything really. And then we have a lot of, um, because I think there's a bit of a gap for people who can't access us during the day. So, for example, like me, you know, I work full time, so I can't really access daytime services. So um, we do have a monthly early bird group, it used to be called the young persons group, but we're all getting <laughs> So sort of, you know, working age or couples can come along together um, and then the family member um, gets a bit of support as well from their peers because that's so important. You know, it's not just about the person who has had um, sight loss. It's actually about their family as well and their friends. So it's an opportunity for them to get together and chat as well. And then we have a walking group on the weekend as well. So no excuses really, got to get involved. No. <laughs> no and, and don't you have an um, uh, iconic liaison officer as well there yes so actually for it's probably ooh, probably about the same amount of time that I've been there we've had an iconic liaison officer at Harrogate Hospital uh, which has proved absolutely essential at this time I mean it always is it yeah. always is you know there's there's although there is the sensory team at North Yorkshire you know you with the council budgets and things going down the support isn't there anymore really spread very um, thin yeah this is it you know it's, it's sort of emergency support is there but as far as that emotional and practical support there's only so much the you know rehab officers can do really so um yeah so our ECLO is just amazing Lauren she is absolutely incredible and um she helps anybody who's recently been diagnosed with an eye condition or um is experiencing sight loss and she just she's she, i don't know how she does it honestly but you know she will liaise as the as the title says with the hospital but she's so much support to so many people um and although she hasn't got sight loss herself she's probably um one of the people that i've met that seems to really get it yeah. without actually experiencing it herself and she's yeah. she's not afraid to get people involved that have had those experiences and things as well. So she's incredible. So yeah, so it's probably about twenty four years we've had that service going as well. Great. Right. Still, still not funded, but <laughs> 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 just slip that one in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's it's an important service for us to keep going as a charity, though. Yes, Definitely. yeah, and and so uh, and you got some other staff members at the, at the society. We have, so we've, we've only got um, five staff altogether. Um, so we've got, um, I'm the only full-time member of staff as director. And then we have um, an administrator, you know, because the bills have got to be paid. Um, and, you know, the boring jobs, you often obviously have to get somebody that's paid to do them. So uh, we do have somebody part-time, Leisha, who does the accounts and everything. And then we have Lauren, who's our ECLO, but then we have Charlotte and Sue, who are, um, well, their official term is home visitors, but actually I like to call them vision support advisors because although they visit people at home, um, it's not just about a cup of tea and a chat. It's really about 
um, supporting the NYCC sensory team services really um, mm. because they don't get a lot of time. It's uh, so we can go into people's homes and we can have a chat with them about how they're getting on, um, if there's anything we can do to help them. Um, and also just to have a chat as well, because these people that we're visiting, there's probably about 200 of them um, that we visit. It's hard right. to tell now. We've had a year of COVID, haven't we? But yes, yeah. There's about 200 that we visit. Um, and they're probably our most vulnerable members who can't come into the centre or... Um, or they can come into the centre, but they they need a bit of extra support. Yes, um, yeah. And, you know, a bit of private support. So that's wonderful. And actually during COVID, um, one of my big things was, you know, what is going to happen to these people who we're home visiting? So we've actually turned it into a, I don't want to call it telephone befriending because it's more than that. We do yeah. have a telephone befriending service as well. But we have... Um, like a vision support advisor service and sue and charlotte are actually calling about 133 people a month at the wow. moment yeah. um just to make sure that they're they're okay they've got everything they need because they're not able to access any kind of information in an appropriate format yeah so because of that we're doing a monthly large print newsletter as well in braille and audio cd so yeah. we're really trying to support them. So they're doing, they're supporting about 133 people just themselves at the moment. Um, but we've got lots of other people doing other things as well. Yeah, yeah. And how how big is the area you cover? Because it's not just Harrogate Town, is it? No, so it's Harrogate District. So actually, do you know, I might have to work out how many miles it is. But we sort of go up to the borders of Thirsk, um, Borough Bridge, Knaresborough, Ripon, um, all the surrounding villages. So really, um, up to the Airedale Society, you know, where the, we go up yes. to them, and uh, we go to Rydale Society. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're quite good, actually, because we've got a few little societies around us which we can go up to their borders so everybody's getting supported. Um, mm. with, although Weatherby is out of our area, we do support quite a few people um, at Weatherby as well. So it's quite mm. a big area, really. The Harrogate yes. District is fairly big. So, but I will, I'm going to work out the miles now that we've talked about. <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> and um, I mean, my, obviously my particular interest is, uh, do you do much with technology, um, with the society? Yeah. Yes. Well, that's, that's one of my director jobs. <laughs> right. Um, is that I teach people IT at the centre. So, which is great. And being visually impaired myself, I'm a user of, this technology anyway and yeah. like your equipment you know things like that the magnifiers the electronic magnifiers um i'm quite often in the our resource room using your lovely equipment <laughs> yeah yeah so i think you've got a, in my you, own office <laughs> yeah i think you've got a a, a clear reader and a, and a, a um clear view haven't you the magnifier and the, and the one that reads out and a couple of other yes. ones as well i think yeah yes the clear readers are particularly good for me because uh been the director and working full time we, we have a lot of reading to do and yeah. although you know i still have 20 percent of my vision left and can use a magnifier um when when my eyes get tired it's you know you just stick that clear view reader on and it's uh it's great because i can just put my post underneath there press the button and that's it just sit back and i can even Excellent. type it out as it's reading so yes yeah, um, yeah and it's great because that resource center um is not only used by us but that's used by the um sensory team at north yorkshire again because they'll they can even not during lockdown obviously but during covid yeah. they've been able to make appointments to come in and demonstrate equipment um so yeah it's been a it's been a great thing to have actually over covid mm. um, because there's just no support at the moment for people new to sight loss like there is you know during um normal circumstances yeah yeah i was gonna i was gonna say sort of is it how bad has it been for you with covid you know well it's just i mean obviously we all just our mouths dropped when we thought the consequences of what was happening but yeah. um, luckily, we've been busier than ever as far as our support services go. Um, and it's actually funny because we have such a big 
day centre, which is always busy. I mean, you'll know yourself when you come in and try and talk to me. I'm usually <laughs> <laughs> doing about 25 things. Yeah. Um, but we're so busy at the centre. And that's the strange thing is that obviously there's just nobody there. Um, yeah. But what's really nice is those people that were coming, um, we also needed to look after them because it's OK being an independent person with sight loss but something like covid can really knock that mm. that confidence so um we've got a few volunteers as well that are phoning everybody that usually would come to the center as well right. so um and then obviously if they need because they know us so well we keep in touch whether people like it or not um yeah. you know they still got access to the aids to the demos um equipment um so we're still helping them in exactly the same way as we were before just people aren't able to come and um join in the yeah. activities so mm. uh yeah it's, it's been brilliant actually i must say that there's with uh, 500 people wouldn't seem a lot um to some societies um to look after but our 500 people were actually in regular contact with every single one of them yeah. which is really nice you know that they feel that they can um stay in touch and we, we because they're not coming to the center with the newsletter it's um we've made it their newsletter so mm. you know i say to them i haven't got time to do all this by myself so you know they have to send me things in to put in and yeah. everything so uh, covid has brought us closer together really but in a way we just want to get open and yes have yeah. a full center again yeah yeah and and, and you're i mean you're you're an expert as, as a director of the society, but you're also an expert from our point of view on, on sight loss. So how would you how would you say that COVID's affected you personally, you know, in, in what you do uh, from, an, from an eyesight point of view? Yes. Well, now I'll be truthful. <laughs> I will be truthful because um, everybody that knows me, they know I'm a very strong, independent woman. You know, don't let anything affect us. The only thing I can't do is drive. Well, I can, but I'm not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's all this thing, I'm very independent. And and this, I think this is what's made me think more about our services is this time uh, with social distancing, with um, the limitations on being able to get out with the restrictions and everything, it has really knocked my confidence. So just to be that thing of being able to go to the supermarket usually, um, and although it's, you know, it's more difficult than it would be for somebody that could see, um, to try and stay away from people and follow those social distance and restrictions has had, it, I think it's had a massive impact on a lot of people with sight loss. Yeah. And um, yes, it's, I'm having to sort of tell myself at the moment that um to stay confident you can stay independent and it's really important for me to talk to people to continue sort of like i am with you now being honest about it and yeah. when people um phone up the center um and you know, usually i'm on reception at the moment <laughs> as well it's another one of my jobs um you know, and they say, they talk to me about their issues and I'm really honest with them. And I say, you know, I'm really independent. I'm really confident, but it's even knocking me at the moment. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I think it's just keeping that, well, I think I've even heard this. I'm probably stealing this statement, but keeping that conversation going yeah. and saying, you know, we're all feeling like that, but it will, it will get better. And mm. so I think it's important as a visually impaired person to actually allow people to be feeling like they are but try and help them through it at the same time because it's really difficult at the moment yeah. <laughs> yeah. it is really, it really difficult. Is. and hopefully yeah. though as well um and what we have found through our services is that hopefully more people with sight loss will actually take up that opportunity to do mobility training hopefully they'll take up that opportunity to get involved with the local sight loss organization because um i think it showed that how powerful an organization like ours can be at this yeah. time to support people so yeah i think um i think i've got a lot out of 
having conversations with the members as well as a visually impaired person. So I yeah. should thank them really, shouldn't I? I should put in the <laughs> Thanks for supporting me. <laughs> but yeah, it's you know, it's difficult to be somebody with sight loss at the moment. But I see uh, some of the bigger organisations have really helped with that. Um, you know, on a very personal level, my husband was on a ventilator with COVID um, oh, at the very first lockdown. 21st yeah. of March, he went into hospital, which was the first day we were ever locked down. And um, to not even be able to get some shopping because visually impaired people weren't classed as, um, well, the needy people that needed online shopping and things like that. So, you know, as a visually impaired person, that was very difficult to not be able to access um, online shopping. But luckily, it appears some of the uh, bigger organisations have been able to sort that out now. But yeah, Mm. it's been, it's it's a tricky world at the moment, I think, for somebody who's visually impaired. Yes. But keep talking. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. what I say. Keep talking. Phone yeah. me up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, do you, it, hopefully, I mean, do, how do you see it going forward? I think hopefully we're looking at with the vaccine coming out now. Oh. We should, we're, 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 we're looking positively at this year, aren't we? Hopefully. Oh, you know? definitely. I think, yes, definitely. I mean, talking to all our members who are, um, a lot of them are, Um, older people and they're having their vaccines now and just you can feel the optimism with everybody it's just fantastic and um, obviously with uh, the care homes now and with the hospital staff being vaccinated you know it's only it's only going to get better now isn't it yeah it is only going to get better we are so excited about being able to open up again yes you know it just really is so exciting and hopefully I keep thinking October, AGM. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's Hopefully the thing we'll to really be allowed to get to. together. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah, it's been really good talking to you. I know you're really busy. And thanks very much for sparing the time. But uh, no uh, thanks very much for joining. Okay. No. Nice to see you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Tanya.